Disclosure, day three, update. For those who have been following the story of the disclosure of the UFO story by the US government on Saturday, this is a little bit of an update. Uh, there's two major stories that uh, were put out, one by Politico and one by New York Times. Both were straight up pieces that talked about a program that was run by the U.S. government from 2007 to 2012 and also talked about um, a study done on experiencers and about a warehouse in Las Vegas that stores uh, UFO related material. So these two stories ran later. There was another major story run by the Washington Post, but these are the two main stories that started what has become a viral uh, chasing of the story by media around the world. This is a bit of an update on day three of uh, this new world of disclosure and what has happened since Saturday. Uh, these are some of the reactions. This is John Podesta, who was the former campaign manager for Hillary Clinton giving his reaction to this breaking story, and he uh, tweeted, uh, lift the veil, thanks. Another reaction was by Steve Bassett, who has been pushing for UFO disclosure since 1996. Uh, in an update today, Steve wrote the following, and now another key event has taken place. What separates this event from all the others is this. It was promulgated by the Pentagon. For the first time, the U.S. military has released gun camera footage from a military plane intercepting a UAP. It is no trivial intercept. It occurred during events involving the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Force in November of 2004. Further, the Pentagon has confirmed a UAP investigation running from 2007 to 2012. This event has the potential to set off a media frenzy of a multitude that threatens the truth embargo. Over the coming weeks, PRG will keep you informed and have more to say on the matter. There was a reaction, an interview was done with uh, Nick Pope today with uh, BBC, and he was asked um, about the, his reaction. And he basically stated, yes, the uh, incident did take place, the Nimitz incident, and uh, the reporting or the, the whole situation with the study. And he said the only thing strange was how the government had denied it for so long. He mentioned the fact, uh, the, uh, the um, relationship of Bob Bigelow, who ran this private uh, investigation for the U.S. government on this uh, UFO subject. He said it's a classic tool used by intelligence to avoid the FOIA. And he said, we, have, we had used the same type of uh, procedure in Great Britain. And so that was basically, and his, his is on, uh, on the internet, you can watch his reaction to the story. Uh, this is a reaction by uh, Stephen Greer. Uh, he tweets the following, urgent. Note that the recent New York Times story is couched from the threat, the threat office of the Pentagon. This is a clear ramp up of false flag fake disclosure designed to, pre designed to prepare people for a threat from outer space. So the warmongers and war profiteers have a new bigger enemy, beware. And there is one piece of truth to this that it is being uh, 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 spun by Lou Elizondo, who's the guy who defected, as a um, situation where um, it, it may be a potential threat to the U.S. US and it's interfering with um, U.S. military operations. And um, so there is a, a potential that this could be used um, to try to uh, create a new enemy for the U.S. military. Uh, here's a reaction from Jim Semivan, who I say is um, the guy who's running this operation. He makes a reply when Chris Bledsoe puts up the video. He replies on Chris Bledsoe's Facebook page, Hey, Chris, we always have you in mind, buddy. Just another validation of your experience. Uh, Jim Semivan also made a reaction uh, to uh, the, I think the pilots were talking about the craft being 40 feet across, and Jim puts up a 
Clarification, 46 feet across, with a white seam, no external propulsion seen, which indicates that they know a little bit more than they've already released as to this object. Uh, Senator Harry Reid uh, was asked on Saturday after these stories came out to respond because it was Senator Harry Reid who was the main uh, senator who uh, pressured to get this black, black budget money to investigate UFOs. And he writes the following, he said, if anyone thinks they have the answers, they're fooling themselves. We don't know the answers, but we have plenty of evidence to support asking the questions. This is about science and the national security. If America doesn't take the lead in answering these questions, others will. And some people uh, made a, a comment about this, that Senator Reid is just a, a politician. He really doesn't know anything. I would um, care to differ. I do think that uh, Reid did know, Reid did get a briefing. You have to realize that a uh, senator like the President of the United States does not have a security clearance. Uh, he, the one thing that, that um, he did bring up, uh, uh, Senator Reid, is that he had gone to uh, Ted Stevens as soon as he tried to get this, and so he went to the other senator to get support. Ted Stevens um, had had a incident uh, as a U.S. Army pilot in World War II with UFOs and was quite willing to support um, the, his fellow senator in getting an investigation of UFOs. Uh, the other person they went to was Senator John Glenn, who also supported this investigation. And the final senator that was involved was Daniel Inouye. And Inouye is particularly uh, famous uh, for his statement about secret government, which I'll play here. A shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, its own fundraising mechanism, and the ability to pursue his own ideas of the national interest, free from all checks and balances, and free from the law itself. Uh, there was a show done overnight with uh, George Knapp on Coast to Coast, and George made a couple of um, interesting revelations. Um, I'll mention him later on in the presentation. Uh, George has been sort of in this thing since 2007 he's known little bits and pieces of it because he is in las vegas where this story basically was run out of and um he states the fact that there are mountains of evidence if you look at the new york times uh, article they reference a 490 page study that was produced uh, by um, the organization that Bass was running that spent this money george knapp said um, that is basically not quite correct. There are mountains of information and George states there are 38 reports, many of them hundreds of pages long. So there is, is all this kind of stuff. And the other thing that um, George had put, and I'll mention later, that people had missed was the whole idea that they actually have hardware. They have UFO hardware. And he described it on last night's show. He said the material is engineered. It's super thin. It's super resilient and it's multi-layered. And he has not seen the material, but he's heard lots about this material that they have. Uh, now some of the developments. Um, this is one of the stories that uh, was related to this because I do the presidents. A lot of people were asking the question, what was the role of Donald Trump in this whole thing? And um, we have to look at um, his initial, um, when he was asked by Marie Dowd, he basically expressed the fact that he really wasn't that interested. When he was asked by Marie Dowd about Hillary Clinton claiming she was going to um, do disclosure, uh, Trump uh, answered her, uh, Trump on Hillary's desire to open up the UFO files. Uh, they are talking about outer space, I assume. I'm not a big fan. So it was always known that that, that was not one of Trump's big things. Um, but um, if you re read this book, which I highly recommend, it's written by one of the Avery, um, Robert Collins, and um, in, in, in his book he talks about uh, the same thing I went through for years of following these various high-level government, military, and scientific officials who interacted with the UFO phenomena and about an attempt by the U.S. government over the years to leak elements of the story into the UFO community. Um, in January of this year, 
uh, he received a um, email from this man, Dr. Ronald Pendolfi, and um, it's him in the middle there with his wife, Aliha, in front of him. And he posted this on his Facebook site. Uh, and, and well, Ron was the guy who supposedly has um, run the sort of been in charge of UFOs since 1983 when he started at the Reagan White House. And um, i am gotten more confirmation that Ron is who he says he is. He's intelligence. He's not um, somebody playing games. He's the real, the real deal. And so this is the Facebook post that Robert Collins put on his uh, site on January the 5th of this year uh, from Ron Pandolfi, friend got me interviewed by the CIA in 1992 at the National Intelligence Directory on Trump and UFOs. They may be anticipating, this is Ron, they may be anticipating some action. I've been waiting for President-elect Trump to, make, to take office uh, before taking more serious action. He is very pro-disclosure and very anti-disinformation. And that's when I got a message after this event, um, and this said, thank Donald Trump. Um, I mentioned this. This is not just um, a Donald Trump issue. I believe it's it's gone on for 70 years. I detail this in my book, Managing Magic, where I basically outline all the times they've run these uh, disclosure programs. That uh, this is another one. This New York Times thing. The Tom DeLonge was one. There's a number of these programs all going at the same time. I've stated this has been going on for 70 years, and I basically list the programs. And in in that regard. I talk about the debriefing that was done uh, by uh, a general of uh, President Obama, and he was dealing with uh, covert ops. And this was Hayden, uh, General Hayden, was giving the briefing. And in, in, in a speech, he talked about how this is done. He's, he calls it sort of like the, the wake up message or the, you know, getting his attention, the, President Obama. And the way he describes these covert operations is they come from the office of the president and not the person of the president. So unless you say something different, we will keep chugging along. So he basically tells the president, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And when you put your hand on the Bible, unless you stop us in that afternoon, we're still going to be doing exactly what we were doing in the morning. So he's saying that this is run from the office of the president and not the person of the president. I believe UFOs would fall into the same category, that this has been going on. You had 14 administrations have all dealt with the UFO subject, seven Democrats, seven Republican administrations. They've all done exactly the same thing. I think this is a, an operation that's run out of the office of the president and is not something that one particular president decides to do or not to do. Uh, here's a latest development. This happened this morning. This is Dan Smith, who's a um, very good friend, 26-year friend of Ron Pandolfi, who Ron leaks a lot of material to or talks to him about these sort of things. And um, they, they, as I mentioned in my last update, had um, Ron had stated um, sort of a skepticism of the Nimitz story. But if you look at his statement, he did not discount the story about the investigation, just the, the part of the Nimitz investigation. And as I've pointed out, there are a number of disclosure initiatives. One is run by Ron, and he wants to do a documentary, which is going to be nonfiction and is going to um, introduce um, some new elements into the UFO uh, world. And the particularly most important one is the idea of the portal. And that's the idea I'm very interested in. I've been following this story for about a year as Dan Smith relates what Ron is telling him about the portal and what's going to happen. And so this is what Dan writes this morning. Uh, it's, it's no small part of the orchestration that Kevin, and Kevin is the guy who's sort of in charge of the documentary, uh, had just arrived back in town. He's back in, he's in Washington to brief government officials and politicians about his portal work. Hmm, he says, actuator, actuator, who's got the actuator? And there's this idea that I mentioned in um, some one of my other updates that they actually have these actuators um, that have some connection to the portal, and um, Ron is in sort of in control of these things. So uh, this is a, a doc. There's a documentary, and it may confirm the fact that there are. Uh, portals, that this thing is interdimensional. It may not be as nuts and bolts as people think it is. 
Uh, here's another development. Um, this is this morning. Ron put some poetry on Open Minds Forum where he, from time to time he will post. And he, here he's talking in part of the poem about new worlds. And this is this idea of um, the fact that we can actually go through these portals into other worlds and come back. This is a video that has been pulled from the internet. Um, I still have it. Uh, Ron has, uh, Ron's wife pulled it off the internet. Um, this is Ron on a cruise ship in December of last year with uh, um, Kashmir sitting on his lap, Aliha's wife there. And I'll play, this is where Ron actually on camera talks about the portal. He's talking about going to the desert, uh, but everybody that's followed the story knows that the portal is, uh, this portal I have is supposedly in the desert. So here's what he says. You can't really hear it because of the news on, the noise on the cruise ship. And I will show you what he says as soon as it's finished. So here's what he says for thousands of years. People have speculated about what it's like to enter into the entrance to another world. Now we are on the cusp of a breakthrough where the door is about to open. John, the man who's sitting beside him, John's next adventure to the desert. He will be joined by a couple of people sitting here, which will bring them through the doorway and into the next world and then back. The significant part about this is if this, if Ron Pandolfi is who he's rumored to be, he's the guy who briefed the last six presidents. And it's quite significant that we, he would be talking about portals and going into other worlds and coming back again. Uh, this is um, the, um, the video that they, they basically showed. Uh, there was an interview, Lou Elizondo did an interview uh, this morning on CBS. You can go to CBS and see that interview where he talks about why he went public uh, with this whole thing. Um, NBC uh, ran a um, another piece where their uh, Pentagon um, national security guy uh, talked about the significance of this whole thing. So you can see all these stories are, are being picked up by a lot of stuff. This is one of the most significant one. I'm going to play about a one minute clip out of this. This is the New York Times, their podcast. Uh, they do a story with uh, the reporter um, who actually breaks the story here. Recently, I got a tip and found myself chasing a story that took me completely in a different direction than anything I had ever tried to do before. And after a series of phone calls, I found myself in a nondescript hotel lobby near Union Station in Washington, D.C., with a high-level intelligence source from the Pentagon. Oh, boy. Um, I've spent uh, a, a good portion of uh, about all of my career pretty much remaining in the shadows. For me, that was more of a professional necessity. Luis Elizondo, who had just resigned his job at the Defense Department, he's an intel officer, so these are a totally different breed of people. They tend to be really spooky guys, they're very secretive, they tend to be more paranoid. There was a lot of looking over to make sure nobody was seeing us that was his back to the wall. Uh, he said he just wanted to see if anybody came in. There was a lot of that kind of stuff. But when you put all of that aside, what came out of his mouth was absolutely extraordinary. He sat across the table from me in this hotel lobby and said that he had been running a program at the Pentagon looking into UFOs. UFOs. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that's the main woman that, that uh, was given the contact and started the story for the New York Times. Uh, then uh, New York Times ran their story, uh, Politico, and then the Washington Post, who already had a major UFO story in 1952 when, they had, when the UFOs overflew the, the Capitol, um, uh, did another story. They, they ran with their story. Uh, and it was headed, um, head of Pentagon secret UFO office uh, sought to make evidence public. So the, the Washington Post has picked up on the story as well. And the story was even run by the Chinese newspaper. They picked up the Washington Post story. And so the story ran in China as well. 
Um, here's what the Washington Post talked about, um, um, which is kind of, kind of significant. Um, uh, but officials familiar with the initiative say that the collection effort continued as recently as last month. So um, the story the story is it's it's still going on. It didn't stop in 2012. Uh, the program operated jointly out of the Pentagon and at least for a time, an underground complex in Las Vegas managed by Bigelow Aerospace, a defense contractor that builds modules for space stations. It generated at least one report, a 490-page volume that described alleged UFO sightings in the United States and numerous foreign countries over multiple decades. And as I pointed out at the beginning of the, um, the, the update, uh, George Knapp is reporting there are 38, not one report, 38 reports that were put out. Uh, this is Bigelow Aerospace. Um, this is um, a powerful guy. He's had encounters. His started with his grandparents having a UFO sighting. He's very interested in consciousness. He's very interested in UFOs, and he has been for quite a while. Um, here's the evil alien thing. This is what Stephen Greer was referring to uh, earlier, and there is this... Um, um, thing that is being put out by Elizondo, uh, despite overwhelming evidence at both the classified and unclassified levels, certain individuals in the Defense Department remain staunchly opposed to further research that uh, could be a tactical threat to our pilots, sailors, and soldiers, and perhaps even an existential threat to our national security. So they're they're playing up this thing. And the whole point is it's national defense. They work for the Defense Department, and that's their job is to um, see threats, to look at threats, to see everything in a manner that it's a threat. So, uh, But Elizondo was actually asked by Leslie Kane uh, the day after he retired, are they a threat? And he said no. As far as They have not exerted any uh, real threat, but you, there's always the possibility. Um, so here's a there's a thing about uh, you know aliens take us to your leader, and they they take him to Trump and he says fake aliens deport them. So there's kind of, this is coming out of the Washington Post. There was a lot of comments at the Washington Post on their story. This is one of the other um, things that is the is the Condine report out of Great Britain, and uh, this thing is being leaked as we speak now. There's bits and pieces. John Burroughs has done a lot of work to get this. Um, thing out, and I'm going to mention a little bit later what, what's coming, uh, but they was, there was a report that they had a 460-page report, and there was some idea, was this the report that was being talked about by the Washington Post, but it's evident that there isn't. So you have these 38 reports by the U.S., then you have a 460-page report from uh, the United Kingdom, and the story is that these documents, uh, almost the same thing, uh, end of this month, next month, they're going to release these documents. Documents and um, it's going to be um, disclosure coming from Great Britain as well. Uh, and this is where they say the final report ran to 460 pages. Okay, so what happens next? Um, this is the um, I got I got this. This has to do with the um, perhaps the Condine report. 15 British UFO files should be readily available to researchers within the next few days. Uh, some new files from us, Australia and New Zealand will also hopefully be available soon. This come from, comes from Isaac uh, uh, Coy in Great Britain, who is an expert on uh, documents and, and uh, these kind of things. Um, this is uh, one of my couple of sources that I have on this whole story. Uh, this is what I was told by one of my sources after this thing broke. I do know there is a whole lot more to come. This was just enough to pop the bubble, just enough to make us beg for more, just enough to create a frenzy. I am told that over the next month, it's going to get real. Uh, here is... Uh, 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 Blumenthal, who was one of the other reporters who, from the New York Times who worked on the story, uh, he did an interview uh, with MSNBC, and in that interview, he stated that the story, the UFO story run by the, Washington, by the New York Times, is the biggest watched and looked at story the New York Times has run in a long time because people are fascinated by the subject. 
the other thing that he stated, and this is the, the, the most important part of the story that everybody has, seems to have missed, is they have material from these objects. This is a quote from Blumenthal. They have material from these objects. They are studying it. And the New York Times knows, and it's just a matter of time. The blood is in the water. It's a matter of time until this uh, material actually is, is exposed. Uh, George Knapp um, again points this out, and I had noticed this as well, but George pointed this out uh, because he was part of this story about the, uh, the, the material. He knew this was there. He said, the most important line in the New York Times UFO story has been overlooked. The Bigelow Company modified buildings in Las Vegas for storage of metal alloys and other materials that Mr. Alizando and program contractors said that had been recovered from unidentified aerial phenomena. Um, so here's the, um, the whole thing. In order to investigate reports of UFO sightings, a building in Las Vegas was modified to house any materials that were suspected to have come from the unidentified flying object. Uh, the, this, uh, this reportedly included metal alloys and plastics. While the section of the facility was also used, and this is an important part that there's only a couple of people in the UFO community know this is going on, uh, but this is going to be confirmed too. Okay, so it says, um, the facility was also used to study people who claimed to have made contact with the objects that resulted in physical and psychological changes. So you have the, the, the reports that are being put out, the gun camera footage, the material, and then you have work being done in this facility with people who have claimed to have come in contact with the object and have, re have it's resulted in physical, psychological changes. I know a couple of people in this that went through this uh, program and what it basically looks at is DNA uh, changes and DNA patterns and it looks at brain patterns. And the brain pattern uh, is being described as an antenna that these people are able to send and receive. And so what they're looking at is highly psychic people and experiencers and seeing if there is a connection between the two of them. So this work is being done. I, I've known about this work for a while and others have, have picked up on the story as well. Uh, Tom DeLong is talking about a 1948 crash, a piece, and he's talking about this layered piece, which I've heard a couple of stories about uh, various pieces that they, they have this layering and um, uh, there was one actually a number of years ago that Linda Howe worked on quite a bit with, with bismuth, magnesium, and zinc that came in layers. And I think she said up to 36 layers that this material was layered. Apparently the piece that Tom DeLong, it sounds like they're going to uh, bring this piece out and show it, has many more layers than that. So um, you're going to see, I, I believe, um, some of this UFO hardware that is going to be um, exposed. Um, this is the saying, this is the, the thing, and this is where I sort of end my, my update. Uh, these are the three guys that are all um, associated with Tom DeLong. They have their own things going on, but they have been pulled in by the Tom DeLong uh, camp. Uh, you have uh, Hal Putoff up in the top left. You have Gary Nolan up top right and Kit Green, and they are the ones that are working on this program where they're looking at experiencers, people who have interacted with the UFO phenomena, and they actually um, gave some of this material, they gave an interview uh, to Annie Jacobson who wrote the book uh, Phenomena. And in that book, um, she talks about this program from I think it's page 394 to page 400. You can read about this program where they have uh, 100 or more people who have had these encounters and injuries or physical psychological changes and they are being tested with DNA and um, brain scans and these sort of things to try to um, get actual material where they're trying to validate it and I think we have a quote yeah this is a quote by uh, Dr. Kit Green and Dr. Kit Green ran rumored to have run the CIA UFO desk before Ron Pandolfi Pendolfi's run it since 1983. Kit Green ran it from 69 to 83. He still does contract work for the CIA and is a physiologist. And this is what he says, the importance of this work that's being done on experiencers. 
it's important to remember DNA does not invent stories. That's usually the big put down of experiences. People who claim they've interacted with the intelligence behind the phenomena, or they just believe they're having these stories. They're inventing these stories. So Kid Green, because they're doing this DNA with the experiences, he says it's important to remember DNA does not invent stories. Gene mapping and advanced single cell analysis techniques reveal biological truths. Now I'm going to play a clip, a one minute clip of Linda talking about this. This is an interview. Linda Howe um, and John Burroughs did an interview with Annie Jacobson on June the 1st of this year on Linda's radio show. You can look it up at Earth Files or her Earth Files YouTube channel and you can listen to this entire interview. Fascinating interview it was done by um, Annie Jacobson who um, has been nominated for the for the Pulitzer Prize. She's written four big books, including the one was the Area 51 book that she wrote. She's a, a, an editorial staff for the uh, Los Angeles Times. So uh, she writes this. Here's um, Linda asking a question and basically detailing this program that is going on to investigate um, uh, experiencers, and that's tied into this New York Times story. May I insert just for a moment your own quote in interview with Dr. Nolan. You said, uh, he said to you, I have met and worked with many of Kit Green's patients and I have looked deeply at the relevant medical data. These people were injured. I have seen the physiological consequences of the harm they've endured. He agrees with Kit Green that in many cases it looks as if it is an electromagnetic field of some sort. Continuing now with uh, Dr. Nolan, it has led to inflammation and other biomarkers in their bodies that can be seen in MRIs, tissue, blood. We are now working on both the genetic and epigenetic components, Dr. Nolan says. I am relatively certain we are the only individuals in the field doing this, close quote. Using mapping technology the Nolan Lab is renowned for, technicians are mapping Green's patients' DNA and their immune systems. They are looking for patterns among the patients using biological data to create an integrated theory. All kinds, this is Dr. Nolan, all kinds of trauma can be picked up by the immune system. Every event that happens to you is recorded by your immune system, close quote, which in turn creates a biological database. Every surgery or bee sting, Dr. Nolan says, every incident of H1N1, flu, head cold, allergy, or chicken pox, it all is sensed and recorded by the immune system. And this is a final uh, slide. This is one of the people that went through this, uh, was tested, um, talks to me about a study from NASA, and I talked to somebody who sort of related with NASA, that there's a 156 megahertz frequency, uh, a radar frequency that pings. It comes from our DNA. It is our bones and skeleton that is the transmitter, and our hair is the receiver. And apparently there's a secret NASA report that sort of gets into this. This is the kind of stuff they're talking about, uh, this antenna thing. And so I would leave the um, my update today by stating um, this thing is unraveling at an incredibly fast rate. We have a $22 million study that's been admitted by the U.S. government. We also have um, a study done on um, metals, on experiencer data, and it's uh, just a matter of time till all these many reports are put out and this thing is exposed and it will verify the fact that um, we have a UFO phenomena that is real and has been studied by the US government for quite a while time, a long time. What we've seen is only the tip of the iceberg. Everybody that I've talked to said there's lots more and very significant stuff that is yet to come from these revelations that uh, are being put out by the U.S. government through the CIA. Thanks a lot for listening.